Coming up on this edition of The Right Stuff, we are going to be talking to the coordinators of the Romance Slam Jam in Detroit. You definitely don't want to miss this, especially if you love multicultural and African-American fiction. You want to stay tuned right here on WPJC 104.5. You are listening to the best, the only, the only place to be on Tuesday night. That's right. You're listening to The Right Stuff, and you're at the right place at the right time. From England to Canada, from Detroit to the Coconos, we are showcasing Christian authors worldwide, giving you tips, tools, techniques, and resources for you, the writer, to hone and perfect your craft. Tune in every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time right here on WPJC 104.5. And your host, Parker J. Cole. As I said before we started our show today, we're going to be talking about the Romance Slam Jam in Detroit. I'm really excited about the Romance Slam Jam. It'll be one of my first conferences I've attended as an author, but it's nice to have it right in the backyard. And we want to give you more information about that in just a few moments. But I want to let you know about my feature article in the UK's biggest gospel magazine, Keep the Faith. I've been really excited about that. So if you want to go and read my article in Keep the Faith, simply go to my blog the right stuff radio dot com and I put it on there as one of the first posts you see and I'm excited about it because the issue celebrates the um contributions of women. As you know, this month is International Women's Month, and it really highlights the contributions of women and what women have done in history all throughout history. So from local history to family history to state, national, and country, our women are some of the strongest ever mood changers in the world. So definitely make sure you love your mom, love your grandmother, love your sister, your cousin, the women who have made an impact in your life. Hold them close today. So you definitely don't want to miss that article, and I would love to get your feedback on it. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break, but if you want to call and ask questions, again, we'll be talking to the coordinators of the Romance Slam Jam here in Detroit. You can call in at 646 646- 668-8485 and then press 1 to be live on air or you can hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Cole, hashtag right stuff with your questions and comments. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break and we'll be right back after these messages. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guest on the Right Stuff radio show. We'll be right back. Have you read the latest issue of Sormag Digital, the award-winning literary magazine for multicultural readers and writers? Sormag Digital is available quarterly and showcases interviews with the best authors in multicultural literature. Sormag Digital features craft and business articles for those interested in writing. If you're looking for a good book, check out our book reviews on what's hot in multicultural literature. For writers looking for new readers to get in front of, Sormag Digital is the perfect place to introduce your book. We offer advertising spaces that fit your promotional budget. Get your free subscription on SORMAG.com or order a print issue on MAGCloud.com. If you would like more information about SORMAG Digital, check us out on SORMAG.com or contact us at SORMAG at Yahoo.com. SORMAG Digital is the magazine for Authors, are you looking for a new way to get your book in the hands of new audience, of targeted buyers? Then a virtual book tour is for you. Right now, virtual book tours is an excellent opportunity for you to introduce your book and who you are as an author. Launching your book is very important. A virtual book tour will connect you with readers. We at WNL, we specialize in book tours, book blasts, radio tours, cover reveals, and Facebook chats. Promoting and marketing your book is what we do. Online publicity, the exposure and the publicity is what you need. Let us help you reach new readers and a new audience. We take care of everything so you don't have to. We set up the tour for you. We connect you with bloggers to advertise your book by way of interviews, guest posts, and reviews. If you are an author of a newly published book, have an upcoming release, or just want to give a previously published book new life, A virtual book tour is your answer. Check our tours out at www.wnlbooktours.com. Visit me on Facebook. I am the owner, Paulette Harper. 
We're back, and you're hanging out with the queen of Tuesday night, Parker J. and her guests, right here on The Right Stuff. Thank you for joining me again. Again, this is The Right Stuff on WPJC 104.5. So glad you're able to join me. Today we are going to be talking about the Romance Slam Jam here in Detroit. Anyone who hasn't heard about it, stay tuned. You're going to hear about it right now. And as I told you all before, most of you who've listened to me long enough, you know I love romance. I used to read a lot of secular romances, and now I've gravitated toward edgy Christian romance. So it's not a surprise. Um, just in the scheme of things, that romance is a huge seller in the publishing industry. And so we're going to be talking a lot about the romance genre, especially how it relates to multicultural and African-American ethnic romances um, across all genres. So we'll be talking about that today. But we're going to be talking about the Romance Slam Jam. With me to talk about that is one of the coordinators of the Romance Slam Jam, Elaine Overton. She's a contemporary romance author as well as the coordinator for this event that has been going on for a few years now. Now. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce my guest co-host and contributor today, Elaine Overton. Elaine, how are you doing today? I'm fine. How are you, Parker? I am good, and let me tell you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. I'm just honored to have a chance to talk about the uh, Romance Slam Jam with you as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Now, you know, uh, people may go, okay, what is the big deal about the Romance Slam Jam? So let's go ahead and kind of get some things out the way first. So we're going to talk the Romance okay. Slam Jam, but I want people to know a little bit more about you and tell us about what you write and um, who you are and all that good stuff. Okay. Um, I'm a uh, multicultural uh, contemporary author. I've been writing for 10 years. Um, I currently have uh, 17 titles. And uh, I am uh, working on number 18. <laughs> um, I went to my oh, wow. first slam jam. Yeah. I went to my first slam jam uh, 10 years ago. And slam jam, romance slam jam, is a 20-year-old uh, conference. In fact, uh, 2016, it turns 21. Uh, so, you know, wow. it's grown. <laughs> grown, and, grown and sad. Mm-hmm. And um, we, uh, it moves from city to city every year. Um, And to give you a little history about it, uh, it started in Dallas, Texas, when a group of multicultural romance authors um, got together together at a local bookstore. And from there, it was maybe 10 people, and now it's a conference of uh, 100 to 300 people varying uh, each year. And it moves from city to city, and every year it has a different... Um, committee that uh, operates out of that city. And so you kind this of is the first time coming to that, Detroit. <laughs> and that's what I'm excited about, that it is coming to Detroit, because it gives some of the Motown authors a chance to meet some of their favorite uh, writers, meet some readers. It's going to be really exciting, and Detroit is rich in a lot of diverse literary works and things of that nature, so I'm really glad about that. It's coming to Detroit. I remember uh, one of my good friends told me about the uh, Slam Jam. When she told me about it, she uh, she was like, are you going? I said, going where? She said, to the Slam Jam. I said, what's the Slam Jam? And then she told me it was Romance Slam Jam. I said, oh, it's here? You know, and so I hurried up and uh, got my registration together because there was no way I was missing this event. There was no way possible. Yeah. And I like yeah, how you cool. mentioned how the <laughs> – I like how you mentioned how the longevity of it is this there because it's been around for 21 years. And so I'd love to hear some of the uh, history behind it. So go ahead. Tell us some more history about the um, about Slam Jam. Well, it started, uh, there was a, I don't know if you are familiar with RWA, which is Romance Writers of America. And it's the largest mm-hmm. romance writers conference in the world. And this particular year, 1995, there was a handful of African-American authors um, who were at the Romance uh, uh, Writers of America conference, and they wanted to do Mm -hmm. something with their um, reader base, which, you know, they felt like wasn't really getting um, a lot of attention during the conference. And so they were invited to a local bookstore by um, a woman named Emma Rogers. And it was um, Emma's bookstore, and, um, you know, it 
pre- predominantly multicultural African American books. And they had such a good time that they realized there was a need for this. You know, that there there was a need for um a conference or some type of gathering that showcased our book. And mm-hmm. after that, uh Emma and um the late Francis Ray um and some other people uh put together the plan. And what I love about it is every year they hand it off to a new group of people. Every year um, someone steps up and sponsors it in their city. So you have people who are familiar with the city. You know, I'm a Detroiter. And you have people who um, know, you know, how to plan something in their own town. And you get to go to a different city every year. So it's kind of cool. I like how you say that that they give it off to a new uh a new committee and new people to do it because it gives uh everyone the opportunity to partake in the event as well as bring more media attention to it as well as have more local authors who are involved in African American multicultural romance to be involved in their city. And I got a couple of comments, Elaine, from um fellow authors and I just basically sent the question now asking them, you know, would you rather attend a conference online or face to face? So Matt in Yakima, Washington says face to face, I'm terrible at online events. Matt, thank you so much for your comment. And then Celeste says, a real conference is best, I think. I haven't really enjoyed anything online as much. And that's in Steinbach, Manitoba. Celeste, thank you so much for your comment. If you want to weigh in on our topic, you can by simply calling in at 646-668-8485 and then press 1 to be live on air. And so you hear, when I hear that you have different people doing the committee, um, setting it up in different cities all over the country so people can get involved, and you see how the Slam Jam has evolved over the years. What are some of the things that come to mind when you look at the early years to where you look at where it is now? Well, it's, it's interesting your comments because writing in and of itself is such a solitary occupation. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you spend a lot of time just doing your computer. So getting out and meeting other authors and finding out that there are other people dealing with all the same stuff you're dealing with, industry stuff, um, story development stuff, any, it's, it's, uh, it's good to, you know, interact and network. And I've been to several slam jams, and one of the most unique things about it is it feels like, even if it's your first time, it feels like a family reunion. You arrive and the people are so warm and welcoming. You feel like you've known them forever. You know, they're very mm-hmm. embracing. And so you're very, you're immediately relaxed. You know what I mean? You're immediately at yeah. ease. And it makes the whole experience, you know, a lot better. Uh, but I think one of the best things is you meet other authors. You meet people who are dealing with all the same things you're dealing with. You meet authors you can build collaborations with, um, resources for information. And sometimes it's just good to have somebody else you can talk to who's going through what you're going through. Mm -hmm. What I like about that, and like how you said, how it just brings that family feel to it because we Mm -hmm. all have to experience the various nuances of being a writer. Like you said, it's a very um, lonely, kind of isolated uh, career because you have to think, you have to be into the zone. I know my zone is usually includes a certain atmosphere I want to create. Um, if mm-hmm. I'm on a deadline, don't talk to me. I want to be in darkness. Yeah. I have my uh, my dog. She sits on my feet when I write, and she doesn't sit on my feet. She sits next to me. So there's an atmosphere you have to uh, <laughs> kind of bring together. Yeah. So I understand that. But so so it's nice to be out, first of all, out from the computer where you can see people and know there are people um, out there instead of in your head, and then you can have the uh, the advantage of meeting people who just feel the exact same pressures of the uh, exactly. of the career. Exactly. 
We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break, and when we come back, we're going to be talking about the lure of multicultural and African-American fiction that has grown over the past several years. We're talking about that. Just kind of get Elaine's personal opinion on that. But if you want to weigh in on our topic, you certainly can. Feel free to call in at 646-668-8485 and then press 1 to be live on air. Or you can hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Co. Hashtag right stuff with your questions and comments. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break, and we'll be right back after these messages. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guest on the Right Stuff Radio Show. We'll be right back. Question. If you write a book, everybody will rush out to buy it. Obvious answer, no. If you were a celebrity or if you had a huge marketing budget, then maybe you can get a lot of exposure for your book. Another solution would be to check out joeytweets.com. joeytweets.com is a promotion and marketing service with access to over one-third of a million followers on Twitter. joeytweets.com has three packages available to fit any budget. That's J-O-E-Y-T-W-E-E-T-S.com. joeytweets.com. Get some serious exposure for your books. Hi. Is your book club in need of some fresh and exciting questions to ask club members and authors at your next book club meeting? Literization, the book conversation game, is 70 thought-provoking questions to really get into an in-depth discussion about the books you and your club members are reading. These questions really get into the characters, the storyline, and into the author's head. These questions may just give you and your book club members a whole new way to get into a new conversation, a literization. Literizations is also a great set of tools for bloggers, interviewers, and authors to use a discussion question. Are you ready to get lit? Please visit our website at litversations.com, L-I-T-V-E-R-S-A-T-I-O-N.com. And please like our Facebook page at Simply Said Reading Accessories. Thank you. We're back, and you're hanging out with the queen of Tuesday night, Parker J. and her guests, right here on The Right Stuff. And we are back, and you are listening to The Right Stuff here on WPJC 104.5, part of the PJC Media Network. And I'm just so glad you're here with me to talk about the romance talk about Romance Slam Jam in Detroit. I'm really excited about it. It'll be my first one I'm going to, and I'm just looking forward to hanging out with fellow authors here in the Detroit area as well as all over. Some of the authors whose books I've read have enjoyed, so I'm really excited about that. So I want you to get as much information as possible about Romance Slam Jam in Detroit. So definitely you want to uh, get a friend of yours if they like multicultural African-American romance. Get them on board. Let them call in and ask their questions because we're we're going to be talking a lot about that. And with me to kind of open up on this topic is Elaine. She is one of the coordinators of Romance Slam Jam in Detroit. She's also a fellow author. She's been writing for 10 years, has over 17 titles, working on the 18th one. Elaine, thank you so much for joining us again on the show to unpack this topic of Slam Jam in Detroit. And before the break, I let our listeners know that we want to kind of just get your opinion on why people just let's, let's let's go back first in your opinion why do readers gravitate toward the romance genre what is it about it that the people love about it uh what i personally love about romance is uh the same thing that's most criticized about it and that is it's predictable mm-hmm. happy ever after ending um there are a lot of people who uh feel that's not um realistic enough or you know it doesn't deal with reality but um, for me, fiction is escapism, you know, and I, I want that um, happy ever after ending. I want to know that these characters that I've come to love and come to care about are ultimately going to be okay. Um, it's very uplifting. Um, it's very uh, detailed. I mean, there's so many different genres within the romance genre. Um, there's historical, there's multicultural, there's like you said, Christian, there's par- uh, paranormal, there's, you know, all of these different categories. But the thing that they all have in common is that uplifting, um, overcoming kind of story. You know, your characters go through a lot, but ultimately they overcome whatever crisis life throws at them. And I think 
we as humans, we need that inspirational message. And I think people do gravitate towards that. I like how you said that because there is something uplifting about knowing that no matter what this couple goes through, they're going to end up together at the end. Yeah. And you kind of need sometimes, especially in real life, when it doesn't happen in real life, you at least like to think, okay, here in fictional world, it works. <laughs> and so I, I, I understand what you mean by that, just knowing that uplifting that can come over crisis, that love really does conquer all. And so in particular, let's talk about the African-American multicultural romances. What makes them unique? in the whole umbrella of romance. And we know there's many genres of romance, but what is it about, like, the ethnic ones that kind of draw people to? Well, I think what started the whole um, genre was the um, need to see characters that reflect um, multicultural people and their experiences. Um, like I said, there's a lot of different subgenres to romance, but... You know, there's not a lot of us who know what it was like to live in Regency England. <laughs> Even yeah. though I enjoy yeah. reading about that world, you know, you want to find mm -hmm. um, characters that you can relate to, characters that look like you and sound like you. And so, you know, in the mid-90s, upsprung this, like, whole uh, revolution, if you will, of uh, multicultural romance, and it's grown from there. Ebooks has just blown it up um, because ebooks are so much um, easier to produce, and you know people are doing more on their own. Um, it's mm -hmm. put a lot more books out there, and you know it's, mm -hmm. some of them are really good. So I think that that. The need, like I said, to, to have characters that reflect our own experiences is what started it. But I think the modern technology just totally blew it up. I like how you said that, too. I, I do think ebooks have had a, a huge impact on more voices being heard and being seen, especially when it comes to African American and multicultural romances. I know for myself, I will never forget when I saw Beverly Jenkins' first book, Night Song. It was back in the 90s, and I must have been X number of years old. <laughs> and so when I saw it, I had never seen, I'll be honest with you, and I told my listeners before, I had never seen black people on the cover in my life. And it was historical, which I liked history, because I was reading the Regency romances and the, the Scottish ones and the Highlands and the Vikings and, and medieval, and I had liked all those. So when I had seen Beverly Jenkins, um, I had never seen it before, I, I'll be honest with you. And I was shocked. So I bought the book just to simply because I hadn't seen that uh, that kind of um Romance, of course. So exactly. it's really good what you said, exactly. like back in the 90s when it happened. Uh, and then to find that there was all this history that I didn't know, especially with Beverly Jenkins. She's one of the premier, if not the premier, writer of African-American history and romance. Mm -hmm. uh, and our she no speaker. Yeah, she's going to be on a show, too. She's going to be on a show in April right before the uh, uh, slam jam. So I'm really excited about that. So um, I, I remember just thinking that, and that's why I was, you know, it's, here's the thing. Uh, Elaine, for me to have her be on my show, and when I was mm -hmm. younger, I read her books. It's just it's coming mm -hmm. that that uh, what do you call it? Coming full exactly. circle. Coming full circle yeah. and having someone that you admire, that work you admire, and you could do this. Exactly. I am giddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so and she is. Right I'm, I'm gonna tell you what I've I talk to readers and writers all the time, and for ninety percent of mm -hmm. us, Beverly Jenkins was a revelation. Most of us cut our yeah. teeth on those historical romances, and we loved them. I love them still. But to mm -hmm. see us on the covers of the historical romances that we love, like you said, all the history and information, and, you know, and I love that she puts a bibliography in the back of the book to tell you where she got her information in case you want to go look it up yourself. You know, but, yeah, she she totally changed the game. <laughs> Oh yeah, she totally did, and I mean, I, like I said, I never, I will never forget when I saw it. Just to this day, I was like, think of that right aid even, and I saw it, and I just, you know, it just left out my, my, uh, my feet there. I couldn't believe it, and that's what it is. That's why I like to bring like different multiculturals, because not just African American, but you know, Asian American, Latin, Latin American, just different mm -hmm. multicultural. Uh, aspects and seeing your face and seeing your experience being expressed and your in romance. 
Exactly, and that's why I think there's a need for that. Now, do you think the publishing industry works towards showing various shades of romance like that? What's your opinion on it? Um, I think that the publishing industry is um, trying to redefine itself because of modern technology. Um, I think there was a period where they were trying to um, be more diverse, uh, but now I think it's about just trying to keep up um, with the changing technology. And they go with um, the most predictable sellers. And that's not always mm-hmm. multicultural. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but the, I think over time they've learned that if you take a chance on certain stories that are outside the mainstream, you might be surprised by what you get. Who would have thought a boy magician <laughs> would, you know, be the huge attraction that he is? <laughs> you know? I like so Sometimes you when, that. You, when you reach outside the box, but, you know, like I said, because of e- e-books, we are producing our own and, you know, mm-hmm. telling our own stories in our own way without a filter. You know, that's the mm-hmm. most amazing thing about e-books is without a filter because, you know, people are self-editing themselves. They don't. They're not going through publishers the way they used to. So the stories mm-hmm. are a lot more unfiltered. We're going to get into information about the Slam Jam Conference coming up. We're going to go ahead and take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to hear our re- uh, weekly review from the book evangelist Deborah Dunson as she gives us her new review for this week. You can follow follow the book evangelist on Twitter at ddreviewsfj. Again, that's on Twitter at ddreviewsfj. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. And when we come back, more with Elaine and Romance Slam Jam in Detroit. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guest on the Right Stuff Radio Show. We'll be right back. Engaging the culture's imagination through speculative fiction, the Untold Podcast produces audio fiction from a Christian worldview. Find us over at untoldpodcast.com, where we partner with authors to tell science fiction, fantasy, supernatural, and horror stories. Find links at untoldpodcast.com to subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, and a variety of other platforms. Each month we produce high-quality audio fiction that's free to download and free to listen. Our submissions are open, and we're always looking to add another great story to over 24 hours of narrative entertainment. Find all of our audio fiction over at www.untoldpodcast.com. Question. If you write a book, everybody will rush out to buy it. Obvious answer, no. If you were a celebrity or if you had a huge marketing budget, then maybe you can get a lot of exposure for your book. Another solution would be to check out JoeyTweets.com. JoeyTweets.com is a promotion and marketing service with access to over one-third of a million followers on Twitter. JoeyTweets.com has three packages available to fit any budget. That's J-O-E-Y-T-W-E-E-T-S.com. JoeyTweets.com. Get some serious exposure for your books. Hello, this is Deborah Dunson, your book evangelist, and today I will be reviewing Hope's Motel by Danielle Reed. This story reminded me of one of my all-time favorite television shows, Touched by an Angel. Hope is my favorite character because she's living out her Christianity daily. She is not forcing it on others, but she is not ashamed to say in whom and what she believes. Her greatest desire is to honor God, and she tries not to lose focus of that. She is truly concerned about people and their well-being, also concerned about their relationship with the Lord. Hope has a gentle, subtle way of telling people about God without being offensive. The way she gets people who have problems to think differently about their circumstances is amazing. I believe she is able to do this because she's been through a lot and knows that loving kindness will draw people. This is a great story, Hope's Motel by Danielle Reed. This broadcast of the PJC Media Network seeks to present wholesome, thought-provoking, and entertaining content. However, the views expressed by the hosts of PJC Media are theirs and theirs alone. They do not reflect the views of this network or its affiliates. Please utilize listener discretion. 
And we are back, and you are listening to The Right Stuff here on WPJC 104.5. So glad you're able to join me. We have been talking about Romance Slam Jam in Detroit. It is the premier place to be if you love African-American multicultural romances. If you are a writer of African-American multicultural romances, you definitely want to get registered for this event. It's going to be in Detroit from April 28th through the 30th, and we are going to have a fabulous time here. I'll be going there, so you want to meet yours truly, connect with me. Love to see you there at the Slam Jam. And with me to talk more about the Slam Jam is my guest co-host and contributor, the coordinator, Elaine Overton. Elaine Overton is a fellow romance author. She has 17 titles, working on her 18th one. She's been writing for 10 years, and she's helping to coordinate this year's Slam Jam here in Detroit. Elaine, thank you so much for joining us again on the show. No problem. Now, Elaine, I want to get some more information about the Slam Jam. But before I do that, I just want to read a testimonial we got about the Slam Jam from Piper Hughley. And Piper says this, Romance Slam Jam will always have a special place in my heart for two reasons. At my first RSJ, I felt so dispirited after I pitched my contemporary romance. I had a realization that maybe my idea might work better as a historical story. My second RSJ, three years later, was the second reason. I bought my bookmarks and initial mailing list to let people know my historical stories that were about to be released. I felt slightly foolish just talking to people about my book, but those discussions laid the foundation for people to look forward to my releases. At that New Orleans meet and greet, I also learned how to have candy at my table so people would stop. However, the warmth of the attendees was such that they stopped anyway. A few people asked me to sign their Kindle covers and T-shirts. At first, I wondered why. Then I came to understand. Romance Slam Jam is for the readers. This was the reader's chance to engage with their favorite authors, even with me, as a new face on the scene. A few months later, my first release, The Lawyer's Luck, hit the top of the Amazon bestsellers list. I have always attributed that initial success to my interactions at Romance Slam Jam. Every time I go to RSJ, I feel welcome and part of a very special family. I'll always be grateful for that. And for those of you who know, Piper Hughley is an award-winning author of African-American Christian inspirational romances, and that was her her testimonial about RSJ. So, Elaine, you hear that testimonial. What are you thinking as you hear it? I agree 100%. <laughs> you know, that goes back to that whole family reunion feel of the conference. Um, it's it's hard to explain. It's one of those things where you you got to experience it. Um, but the people are... They they understand we're in this together. We're all doing the same thing, and we need to, um, you know, promote each other and help each other and support each other. And it is a wonderful experience um, to spend time with not only your readers, but, you know, as a reader, your your the authors you love. You know, you get to meet them personally. You get to sit down and have dinner with them and, you know, interact with them and quiz them on their characters and, Talk about the storylines and where they came up with it. You know, it's a very personalized conference. Um, I've been to some conferences where there are thousands of people, and you're very, um, you're sort of alone in a crowd. You know, mm-hmm. and I've never been to a slam jam where I had that feeling. I've always felt like I am returning to old friends. I am returning to family. And most people that I know who've gone to one continue to go. Let me ask you this. Go ahead. Let's get some information, some practical logistic information about the conference. We've got listeners listening in. They want to register. Where can they register for the conference? Okay. You can go to www.romanceslamjam.org. O-R-G. It's a three-day conference, and the three-day conference includes over 50 workshops, games, reader sessions, Q&A panels, um, it includes a cruise, um, the Detroit Princess Dinner Cruise. It includes the Beverly Jenkins Keynote Luncheon. And if you've ever heard Beverly speak, you know that's something you want to be a part of. And it includes um, uh, the meet and greet, which is uh, we're doing the Motown Karaoke meet and greet. And it is mm-hmm. uh, the Motown Karaoke Review is what we're calling it. And it's all uh-huh. Motown songs and our karaoke. 
Um, and it also includes the um, the crown of the event, which is the Emma Award. And that is uh, a banquet that happens Saturday night, and it is the award ceremony um, for Romance Slam Jam. The Emma Awards are um, an industry um, award for everything from best author to uh, best cover. Um, there's a Spirit Award for most supportive book clubs. Um, it's like a total of 13 awards. Uh, but that oh event is Saturday night, and it's a really nice banquet. And the Emma Awards are an industry-respected um, award. And the uh, total, the full conference right now, regular registration, is 360 Now, you know, I know that may seem steep, but that's about $100 mm-hmm. a day for that. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, you're getting... Quite a bit. <laughs> if you go to the website, yeah. you can see the um, the full program is listed on the um, on the um, program page. And there's other things throughout the day. There are book club um, discussion groups. There's um, a book exchange where you can bring up the three used books and get three more used books. Um, there is. Um, movie screening. Um, There's an industry documentary called Love Between the Covers, and we're going to do two screenings of that. And um, despite the title, it's about the romance industry. It's it's talking to different authors Mm -hmm. about their own experiences, and it's going to different conferences and talking to readers. And, you know, it's a really interesting um, take on the romance genre. So there's a lot to do. I mean, from 8 in the morning till about 10 at night, for those three days, there the schedule is jam packed with activity. Um, but we are also doing something unique for Detroiters, and that is a day pass. Okay. And mm-hmm. you can come and register on site. And the event is being held at the um, Edward Village Hotel, uh, formerly the Royal Dearborn in uh, Dearborn, and it's in the Fairlane Town Center. Um, for those of you who lived in Detroit forever, way back in the day, it was the Hyatt. And the day passes. Yeah, everybody knows that big brown hotel, <laughs> glass yeah. hotel. Um, but it's day pass consists of everything that's happening on that particular day, and the day pass is a hundred. Um, the only thing it won't include is the cruise. Um, you'd have to pay separately mm-hmm. for the dinner cruise. And like I said, the, the every day there's, you know, 20, 30 workshops, games, book discussion groups, reader sessions, Q&A sessions, you know, and then um, some type of dinner event. And, again, you you come to the hotel in the morning between 8 and 9 and register on site. Um, it's $100, and it gives you access to everything that's happening that particular day. Now, that's specifically for Detroiters. The day pass, but the full conference is uh, 360, and like I said, it's registration is Wednesday evening between four and eight. You can register on site, and also registration is open every morning between eight and nine. So, but there's you know it's it's a whole lot of stuff <laughs> going on. We're also offering um, tours to uh, Hitsville. Uh, USA and the Wright Museum throughout the day on Thursday and Friday. So, and oh, in the Second Baptist Church, we're doing um, a uh, Underground Railroad tour Wednesday night, and also um, a city tour Tuesday. So there's a, the whole week is jam packed full of activity, you know. So it's it's you know it's a nice chunk of money, but you get a lot for it. I think and that it's still is a lot jam packed than a lot of other conferences. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. At three sixty. Some people like you said, some people make bulk at three sixty, but if you you know, don't eat lunch for you know, a couple of weeks, bring your lunch to work <laughs> you know, or yeah. uh, you don't have to uh, <laughs> you, don't you have, know especially if you look at your career. So you know. <laughs> exactly. And if you stay in the hotel, food. breakfast is included. See, that's even better. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's even better. 
what I uh, what I like about it is that uh, serious authors understand the reason to go to these kind of events. And you just told us there's going to be a lot there for the reader and the writers. And I know writers particularly love to interact with readers, even though they may mm -hmm. introvert. So when a reader who loves your books can sit across from you and say, hey, why did you do this with this character? Why did you do that with that character? That's just something that resonates within every writer. Just like, oh, my gosh, they like my book and they like this character. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, I know for my, uh, I know for myself, I've had uh, I, my first book, uh, my first romance, which is uh, Many Strange Women. When I did that book, everyone hated my one character named Leah. Everyone hated her, and I loved it. I absolutely <laughs> loved everyone hating it. And so, hopefully, uh, if you get a chance to go to Slam Jam, you get to see me there. You can say, "Why did you make such a character that I hate?" And I'll be able to tell you why I did that. So you definitely. Definitely don't want to miss Flange down here in Detroit. We got a comment from Sharon in New Jersey, and we're to our conferences, Elena. Sharon says, I would love to go and meet them face-to-face, -face, and it would be nice if we had one in the New Jersey area or around about this general area. However, however I'm not opposed to the online idea. Uh, Sharon, thank you so much for your comment. When you hear comments about the online conference, Elaine, what do you think about that? Is it just better to do the face-to-face -face conference, or are there plans to ever take RSJ online? What do you think? Um, I don't think there's any plans to take RSJ online, but um, I, I think there's a need for both. You know, you can't always mm -hmm. mess up and go across country. So the online conferences, you know, do serve a need. But I also think you do need that face-to-face -face interaction. You know, and a lot of people take the opportunity um, and use Slam Jam as a family vacation. Bring your family. While you're at workshops during the day, they can be out sightseeing. You know, so it, it, there is a need for both. We got a comment from Marilyn in Kelowna, British Columbia. Marilyn, thank you very much for your comment. Uh, Marilyn says, I never had the money to travel to a conference and missed a recent author's workshop here in my city because they were charging for it. And um, she just made another comment there. And Marilyn, thank you so much for that comment. And if you want to weigh in and still ask a question, you still got time, you can call in at 646 Six six eight eight four eight five. Press one to be live on air. Hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Cole hashtag P. I mean hashtag write stuff with your questions and comments. Um, Michelle says I prefer face to face, but in reality, online is probably more feasible. Michelle, thank you so much for your comment. And so we have these. Um, we have the fact that we understand that networking with other authors is important. That's what it comes down to. I was surprised. Because uh, with this show, I network with authors all the time, and I see them as my family. You know what I mean? And I can't imagine having that connection that I've created with them online cemented when I actually see them face-to-face. -face. So when you hear about the conference and um, how people just really connect, how have some of the authors that you've known who attended Slam Jam, how have their careers been catapulted by that face-to-face -face interaction like Slam Jam offers? There's a lot of different um, ways that you can um, increase, if you will, your um, reader readership through Slam Jam. Um, it's an opportunity for unknown authors to get in front of an audience um, and introduce themselves. We're doing an event that's called um, Speed Dating with the author on Saturday afternoon, <laughs> and every registered uh, published author who is uh, scheduled to be there um, will be participating, and every reader will have three minutes with every author. And it's a great <laughs> opportunity to, if it's an author you already love, to talk about the characters, talk about the books you love. If it's an author you've never heard of, you might find someone that you do love that you didn't know anything about. And for new authors who haven't built that readership, it's a golden opportunity to introduce yourself to the audience that would buy your books. This is your genre. These are the people who already enjoy what you're reading. So, you know, it's it's a great opportunity, and, and you can do that to an extent online, but that face-to-face -face interaction, you know, you have your little promotional items that you can share, and, you know, it it takes it to the to a different level, I think. 
I like that because I know how I felt when uh, an author, I'm sorry, a fan of mine who I um, work with, uh, it was his wife, you know, a guy who I work with, his wife. She just was curious on my book, so she read them. And so we were at a restaurant for some company event, and she's sitting across from me asking me all these questions about, okay, why would you do this, and how come this character this? And are you, I, for any author, to imagine to sit in front of your reader and have that intimate conversation, even if it's for a minute, to be honest with you, just to know that mm-hmm. this reader really appreciated. That's why you don't want to miss RSJ in Detroit. You want to be here. You want to, first of all, as Elaine says, stretch your network, get more involved with your network. You want to meet new authors. You want to meet your readers. You want to have a chance to get in front of them. You want to support um, diverse fiction like African-American multicultural fiction. And you want to have a great time. There's a lot to do in Detroit. And so during the week of the Slam Jam, you can go to the Underground Railroad Tour. You can go to the Hitsville Tour. There's a lot of stuff to do here, especially the African, Charles H. Wright African-American Museum, uh, one of the best museums in the world that displays African-American history. You can go there. You can see some of the wonderful exhibits that they have there. I've been there several times. And you'll enjoy it. And then it's kind of nice to just be out and about in the city doing something. And so you don't want to miss Slam Jam here in Detroit. And so, Elaine, as we uh, talk to our authors, and some of the authors are going to say, um, well, what if I don't particularly write African-American fiction? What if I write different types of fiction? Can I still join? What would you say to them? I would say, come on. Uh, Our readers don't Mm -hmm. just read African-American romance. They don't just read multicultural romance. Most readers are avid readers, and they'll read a phone book if you put it in front of them. (laughs) We love to read. You know, it's just this particular conference is geared towards the multicultural genre, but our readers are a very diverse group. I mean, they literally come from all over the country, and some come from outside the country. And, you know, they, they read um, African American and multicultural romance, but that's not you know the limitation of who they are. So yes, by all means, you're welcome. I gotta ask. We talked about Beverly Jenkins earlier in the interview, so kind of get some more information about her and how why she's our keynote speaker. Go ahead and talk about her real quick. Okay, she's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> not just as a writer, I'm not <laughs> as a human being. <laughs> um, we asked her to be our keynote speaker, and she, you know, instantly agreed because, you know, she's just super nice. And then she went on to do even more. Um, she's provided us with a lot of help, a lot of resources. Um, anything we ask of her, she pitches in. Anything, you know, we need. That, you know, she can do, she'll do it for us. So, you know, we asked her to give a speech during our conference, and she has been so much more of a help. But, you know, that's that's just the person she is, and a lot of authors are like that. They will help you, you know. And mm-hmm. she didn't have to, but, you know, she is very um, – anyone who knows her or has met her, um, she's a very generous person with her time, you know, and – she um, is going to give a speech. I don't know what the speech is going to be about, but I've heard her speak before, mm-hmm. and she is, you know, I don't know if you have Parker, but she's very eloquent. And because she's so knowledgeable about the history of African-American people, the information that, you know, that she gives is just, most people have not heard of this stuff because we don't research. You know, this is her field. Mm-hmm. This is her, you know, her area of study. So she's an authority. So most people don't you know, know this stuff, so it's it's always new information. And she's a natural storyteller. So, you know, if you want a good, informative, <laughs> interesting time, come mm-hmm. to the luncheon. You can buy individual tickets. You don't have to come to the whole conference. You don't have to do a day pass. Individual tickets to um, certain events are online as well. Um, you can buy tickets just to the keynote luncheon. You can buy tickets just to the banquet. Um, you can buy tickets just to the dinner cruise, you know. So if you mm-hmm. want to see her speak but you don't particularly want to do the whole conference, by all means, go online and buy um, a ticket for the keynote luncheon. 
I can speak to Miss Jenkins' generosity. I remember when I connected with her on Facebook a couple of years ago, and I was so shocked that she accepted my friend request. I was shocked. And then she said, you know what? I, she said, if you have a book coming out and you want to use my page to promote it, go right ahead. This is to someone she didn't even know. And I was just in tears. I was like, oh, my gosh, I just can't believe she did this. So she's extremely generous um, with her time and with her help for other authors. And just being just being blessed by that generosity is really something. Yeah, yeah. We're going to go ahead and take a quick event. short break. Oh yeah, and she and she does, especially when she talks about African American publishing, publishing in general, uh, historical facts research. She's very good at letting us get really um, motivated to make sure that our information is accurate. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. When we come back, we'll have our final thoughts from Elaine from the uh, Slam Jam, which is Romance Slam Jam in Detroit, as well as some encouraging words. Stay tuned right there. We'll be right back in just a few moments. Are you a reader looking for more compelling Christian fiction? Maybe something a little more edgy or a bit more real? Are you tired of most Christian fiction shying away from the truth and settling for a rose-tinted view of the world and its issues? Or are you an author who has a compelling story to tell but you're afraid it doesn't jive with today's brand of Christian or secular fiction? Are you tired of Christian publishers telling you that your content is too edgy? Or maybe you've tried submitting your content under the radar to secular publishers only to be told your themes are a bit too religious. We invite you to take a look at the Crossover Alliance. We are an online publishing company that specializes in edgy Christian speculative fiction, speculative fiction with Christian themes and real world content. Our company is formed from authors and readers just like you who are breaking into the mainstream and Christian markets with this compelling genre. Head over to the www.thecrossoveralliance.com for all the details on who we are, what we do, and what we accept. Right now, if you sign up for our email newsletter, you'll receive a free digital copy of our first short story anthology. Check us out today and help us spread the word about the Crossover Alliance, where light shines brighter in the darkness. We're back, and you're hanging out with the queen of Tuesday night, Parker J. and her guests, right here on The Right Stuff. Hi, and welcome back to the show for our final segment. We have been talking about Romance Slam Jam here in Detroit coming up in April. And Elaine, who is one of the coordinators of the event, has been just telling us all about it. It's going to be so much fun. If you love African-American romance and multicultural romances, you do not want to miss this event. She, Elaine, just thank you so much for taking time out your schedule to give us just all the nice, juicy bits about Slam Jam. And just I'm looking forward to being there, meeting you, and meeting some of the other authors I know I've read over the years, and then having the chance to just see Beverly Jenkins, who was one of the um, the premier in African American uh, romance and multicultural romance. So again, thank you for being with us on the show. I want to give people an opportunity to first of all get the information about the Slam Jam again. So go ahead, share with us the website and what they can do at that website, the information they can receive. Go ahead and give us those social media outlets. Okay. Um, the website is www.romanceslamjam.org. Org. Um, most of the information you need is there, and in fact, all the information you need is there. Um, registration, program information, previous uh, Slam Jam information. Also, the uh, web, the Facebook page is Romance Slam Jam um, on Facebook, and. Um, there's also um, a Twitter account. I don't remember the handle, <laughs> um, but I am constantly <laughs> posting it. Um, if they follow me, they can see it because I have been listing authors that are going to be at Slam Jam um, to let people know, you know, to go check them out and see, you know, how many of these people you know, how many of them you want to get to know. But Oh, and also and, if you go you to know, the website, the, the Twitter and Facebook are there on the website as well. You know, Elaine, uh, my show has always exists to encourage writers who God gave the gift to write to write. And what I want you to do in the last few moments that we have, I want you to just give some encouraging words out to our authors who have not picked up the pen, especially for those who like African-American culture, they like multicultural 
uh, stories, whether they're coming from a Asian influence or Latin influence, whatever it is, I um, want to encourage them to use the gift and write, to go ahead, give some encouragement to our authors or aspiring authors in our audience today. Okay. Um, one of the best things about writing is that it's within you. It's all within you. You don't need anything else to write. The story lives in your brain, and for most authors that I know, um, aspiring and those who are published, that those characters aren't going to leave you alone. So you might as well sit down in front of a computer or pick up a pen and paper and put it, on, put it out there because they're not going to leave you alone and the bug is not going to go away. And the um, I, I'll reference J.K. Rollins again. You know, this woman sat in a diner and wrote a bestseller, you know. You don't know what um, what your story is going to do for someone else. Sometimes um, I'm just using you as a vessel to write that story because someone else needs to read that story. Um, you would be surprised how many people have that one book and they get it out and, you know, they um, – Harper Lee, they get that one major novel out and, you know, it changes the world. Um, and I guess the most – Encouraging thing I can say is believe you can do it. Um, there are going to be days you're going to feel like you can, especially because it's so isolated and you're alone just with your thoughts. But you can do it. I mean, there are people who never thought they'd be published, and they're published. There are people who have wanted to write for 20, 30 years and finally get around to it, and, you know, they take off like a rocket. So, you know, believe you can do it. And do it. And there's nothing to stop you. There's no, you don't need special equipment. You don't need to have a, you know, a unique skill set. All you need is the story in your head and the ability to write it down. So believe you can do it and do it. Elaine, thank you so much for those awesome words and encouragement. I can't think of a better way to end the show. Thank you for joining us today. Looking forward to seeing you at the Slam Jam in April. Okay. You know what? We forgot to give everyone the dates. Go ahead. we got like oh, oh, two minutes left. Okay. Go ahead. What's the date? Uh, the April 28th to the 30th. <laughs> oh, <laughs> kind of important. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, uh, so early much. registration is uh, – April 27th at the Edward Village, uh, Michigan, in Dearborn, between 4 and 8. Elaine, thank you so much for taking time and being with us on the show. Really appreciate it. Like I said, looking forward to seeing thank you at you the Slam Jam me. this year. You too. And we are talking today to Elaine Overton. She is the coordinator of the Romance Slam Jam in Detroit that is taking place April 28th through the 30th at the Old Hyatt Hotel for my Detroiters. Um, so you definitely want to go ahead and go to their website, romanceslamjam.com, to get more information about that. Um, best-selling author Beverly Jenkins, who is the premier mother of African-American historical romance, will be the keynote speaker. There's going to be a cruise, underground railroad tour. There's going to be lots of workshops. You'll get to meet some of your favorite authors. So you definitely don't want to miss the Slam Jam in Detroit taking place April 28th through the 30th. To get more information, again, go to www.romanceslamjam.com, or you can follow and ask Elaine any questions you may have. You can follow her on Twitter at Elaine underscore Overton, and that's her Twitter handle. Or you can go to her website, connect her through there at ElaineOverton.net. Thank you so much for joining me for this edition of The Right Stuff. Join me Saturday for the Parker J. Cole Show, where we talk about empowering women through setting boundaries. You definitely want to join me for that. That's on two, that's on Saturday from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time right here on WPJC 104.5. If you want to get us on the go, download Stitcher and you never, ever have to miss a show. Thank you so much for joining me for this edition of The Right Stuff. You have a wonderful, wonderful day and God bless. Thank you for joining us for this edition of The Right Stuff. Follow Parker online at parkerjcole.com to hear this show and other shows. Visit the show archive at the right stuff radio .wordpress com. We'll be back same time next week, 7 p.m. Eastern Time.